In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen here. It's from the 2024 Leaving Cert exam honours level paper one. If you're looking for a different question from that paper, you should be able to find a playlist in the description below. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully so it's similar to what you're used to your teacher doing. But it's we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube, so take advantage, pause, rewind, stop, rewatch, all those things you can do on YouTube. If you find this video useful or any of my videos, I would greatly appreciate a like, a subscribe, and what helps most is sharing it with a friend that's doing the Leave a Cert or one that's going to do it next year. In question two, it starts off, they give us a quadratic equation here and ask us to find two solutions. They tell us the solutions are going to be complex and uh, they, want, they want us to write each of them in the form of A plus BI. Quite common that. And um, So how do we solve a quadratic equation? Uh, we don't bother factorizing. Okay, you, well, maybe maybe you can do it in your head. Uh, yeah, why not? Some students probably are good at doing these in their head. Uh, but for complex numbers, it's just a little tricky. Um, I guess there is a few tricks you can do here and there. But let's just do it a slow way. Let's use the minus b formula. So we're going to solve a quadratic. Remember, you can do any quadratic like this. I know plenty of students who are good students, but they just use the, the minus b formula for, for every quadratic. Um, so the minus b formula will tell us, um, well, yeah, let me write it out first. Uh, minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So um, yeah, in this case, b will be 12. So we'll get minus 12 plus or minus the square root of 144. That's 12 squared. Um, minus 4 times 1 times uh, 261 all over uh, two. So if we clean this up, let me just check my notes here. Um, I'm not sure what this comes out to be. Uh, 1,044, I guess, minus 144 is uh, 900. And yeah, that's, I, I have uh, 30 written down here. So we'll get a uh, minus 12 plus or minus the square root of minus 900 all over two. Now here's, a, here's our problem, minus square root of a minus, that's where our i is gonna come from. Uh, so how we do this? We just take the minus out and, and let, here, take the minus out and let an i appear. So we just get the square root of uh, 900. So this becomes uh, minus 12 plus or minus, the square root of 900 is 30. 30 and the i, the i has appeared from the minus. Uh, that's all over two. Remember z equals this. This is a uh, minus six plus or minus 15 i. And that, that should get you full marks, but uh, just, to be, just to be sure, write it out two times. Just write minus six plus 15 i, and write minus six minus 15, sorry, 15 i, uh, z, z equals what that. Okay, that's part A, let's move on to part B. In part B, uh, they give us uh, this expression here, one minus the square root of three i, all to the power of nine. And basically they want us to simplify that. They want us to write this as just a plus bi. And they give us a hint though, they say use uh, De Moivre's theorem. Um, what they're leaving out there is we need to turn it into polar form first. Uh, De Moivre's theorem, let me jot it down here. Um, it's in your, yeah, it's in your uh, formula book here. So you don't have to remember this. And um, that'll be something along the lines of or cosine theta, plus i sine theta, that's equal to, oh sorry, all of this to some power, power of n. And that's where it starts to become useful. This is the same as writing or, sorry, or to the power of that n multiplied by cosine n times theta plus i sine n times theta. That's, that's the Moivre's theorem. The problem is there's no cosines and sines over here. So the first thing we need to do is make this look like this. And that's called uh, polar form, turning it into polar form. Now, if, you, when you, if, if or when you go into college and end up using complex numbers, which lots of students do, it's not as strange as it sounds, uh, you'll be much more common to use polar form, to be using uh, ones that look like this than this. So how do we do it? Uh, I always just draw a picture. Uh, let's draw this quickly. One minus square root three. One is over here, minus square root three, down here somewhere. That's the, this complex number, 
on, forget the nine for the moment. For the next little while, I'll just ignore the nine. And um, so that's that's what it looks like down there. And if I draw this with a little some lines in here, this is a, the height here is square root three because remember it's minus square root three down. And the width across here is one because that's a point one. Um, and the length here, the length here, uh, the radius, the length to the center. Well, that's a, a Pythagoras theorem. One squared is one. Square root of three squared, three. Add them together, we get square root of four. So that's two. The length there is two. Ho hopefully that's clear what I said. Uh, this squared plus this squared is four. And um, square root of four is two. That's where I got that. So um, from this, let me write out minus square root of three i. This guy. Polar form tells us writing this is the same as writing, uh, let me write here, or cosine theta plus i sine theta. These are the same thing if you get the right number for or. And the number for or is simply the, the modulus, the distance to the center. So or is just two. The angle, the angle is just from here all the way around to here. That's what the angle is. Um, so that's all we need to find. And that should be easy because we have a triangle right here. If we find this angle in here, at 360 minus this, we're finished. And this triangle is just one square root of three. So ta tangent, uh, oh, oh hell, another hour of algebra. That's how I remember anyway. Tan of uh, this angle, let's say tan of, hmm, let's, let's call it phi. Tan of phi is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Uh, put this into a calculator, you'll get us get phi is equal, actually, let me double check what we get. Uh, phi is equal to 60 degrees, or if you're using radians, which you probably should be, um, oh, what is radians then? Uh, pi over three. Okay, so that's this angle in here. So what's the big angle? Um, you know, all my notes, I've used degrees, apologies for that. So for all my notes, I've used 300 here. So let's uh, write that here. Theta is equal 300. This angle all the way around. So uh, here we go. Put it in here, 300. 300. Okay, so this is the same as this. That's what polar form tells us. Uh, look this up in your book, how do you change, or online, how do you change into polar form? That's all I've done here. Um, to say that different ways, this number is the modulus. This number here is the, you know what, I've forgotten the name for it. Um, it's the inverse tangent of, of these two numbers. It's, cannot think of the name of it, apologies, but it's a very common one that'll come to me and I'll shout it out suddenly. Anyway, 300 in this case. So this is what we're gonna use the Moivre's theorem with. So let's write this out again here. Uh, two times cosine 300 plus uh, i sine 300. And again, you could use uh, pi, uh, five pi over, no, yeah, five pi over three instead of here. Anyway, we're gonna use this and we're gonna take this to the power of nine because that's what they're asking us. This is the same here. So we're just gonna take it all to the power of nine using the Moivre's theorem. because This is what we have now. The Moivre's theorem tells us, well, this nine can just go on to the two. 2 to the power of 9. This 9 will affect the cosine by being cosine 9 times 300, which is uh, 2700, plus i sine 2700. Um, and then you, you, at this point, actually, you could just put this in the calculator, by the way. Cosine 2700 will it'll just give you the answer we're looking for. Um, but also, you can, just, just remember, uh, 360 is the same as zero, is the same as 720. It's the same as uh, 1080. So we can just see how many times does this rotate? Divide 360 into this and we get, uh, I don't think I have there, I, I believe it was 7.5. So uh, this goes around, this, this goes around seven and a half times. So a half means this is the same as two to the power of nine. Sorry, two to the power of nine is uh, 512. So two to the power of nine is just 512. Cosine 2700 
goes around seven and a half times. So it's the same as going around a half. 180. Or again, uh, in radians, just pi. Plus i sine 180. All you have to do is change this back into a plus bi, the form of a plus bi. And again, you could have done that here. The calculator would tell you cosine 2700 is, well here, let me just draw cosine here. That's cosine, sorry. Um, there's 360, there's two pi. Half of it is minus one. So this is just minus one. And if you put this in a calculator, you'll just get minus one as well. Uh, so this is equal 512 multiplied by minus 1. And what about sine 180? Uh, let's see, sine 180 goes like this. At 180, it's 0. Sine of 180, again, your calculator will confirm this. Sine 180 or sine pi, if you have it here, or sine 2700 is 0. So you can ignore this guy. So this just becomes 512 multiplied by minus 1 minus 512, there's a zero here. And that's it, this, uh, they wanted it in the form of a plus bi, that plus zero i. It's, they don't, you don't need to show this, but, I, but if you want, you can leave zero i there. Uh, but that's, that's the answer to part b. Um, I, that was a bit messy, so uh, hopefully you stayed with me on that one. If you didn't, I apologize. Pro uh, that felt a bit messy, felt like bad teaching there. If you have any follow-up questions, let me know. And I'll, I'll, for now at all, I'll move on to part C. In part C, they give us this argon diagram with W already in it, that's at the minus two plus two I. And uh, they also, they give us this um, complex number here and they ask us to plot it as accurately as we can. Now there's two ways to do this. Uh, although when they say as accurately as possible, um, I, I would hedge one way or the other, but uh, first way to do it is simply to put this into a calculator. Four multiplied by cosine pi over six, that'll give you the real part. That, and that comes out as uh, 3.4641, uh, about three and a half. So you go to just below three and a half um, and mark off something. Uh, then a sine pi over six, that's a half, multiplied by four, and that gets two, so we're at two here. Where do they meet up? About here, and that's your U. That's your U, that's one way to do it. Um, remember to show the examiner your dot lines, show them how you got this number here, show them how you got that number. You should be fine there, I think. Um, but how I would do it, um, how I would do it is I would use polar form. I would use the idea of, what is this? How do you find something from this? This is the radius, and this is the direction, this angle here. This angle here is pi over six, that's uh, 30 degrees, or get out your protractor. So again, doing it a second way, we're gonna use a protractor and a compass. Uh, get your protractor out, I don't have one. Uh, you get it out here and you mark out 30 degrees. 30 degrees, mark it off somewhere on your protractor there. And um, draw a line. So let's draw a line out here. Then uh, on your compass, you get the radius. Start in the center, get the four, and mark off here. Should be should get the same answer as, as the other way. Um, I would say the drawing way is slightly more accurate, so as accurate as possible. I, the, I'm sure they'll give you full marks for both of them. Either way, here's U over here, W is here. And we need both of these for part two. Uh, part two, they tell us uh, the complex number zero is at zero, zero down here. Um, they want you to find the size of the angle W0 or origin or O, I'd say W O U. This angle in here, let's uh, draw it out here. What is this angle? Is basically what they're asking us here. Um, sorry, I paused there for a moment. I edited it out so you probably didn't notice it. But uh, I paused there for a moment because in the back of my mind I think there might be some equation to find the uh, the, um, the angle between three points, I guess there is definitely in in vectors, so it, it probably be, you could probably do that here. Uh, you don't need to though. There's a, a couple of clever ways to find this angle here. Um, 
the clever way basically is you know it's uh, it's pi or 180 um, on a straight line. So if we could find this angle in here and this angle here, we'd be finished. We just take these two away from pi because they want the answer in radians. So it's okay for you to use degrees just once you change at the end. Um, so we need to find this angle, this angle, and take it away from pi or 180. And um, finding these angle, these angles are um, what what the polar form does. For example, this angle in here is is already done. It's it's pi over six or 30 degrees. So we just need to find this angle up here. So this was the point uh, W is equal to two minus two i. Sorry, minus two i. Now there's a couple of ways to do that. You could get the um, I still can't remember the, the word for the inverse tangent of this divided by that. <laughs> it's, 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 no, it's not going to come to me. Um, so you could get the angle of this, it's just the inverse tangent of minus 2 divided by 2 will get us, sorry, will get us this angle here, this full angle here. Just take that away from 180 and we'll get down here. Um, or you could draw a triangle. This is too high, too wide and get uh, the tangent of, uh, I guess, 2 divided by 2, or indeed 1, the uh, inverse tangent of 1. That'll get you the answer. But all of that, you don't need to do any of that, because you should know this angle. It's 2, it's 2, it's symmetrical, it's 45 degrees, or it's um, pi divided by 4. Pi divided by 4. So any, whatever method you use to get these, there's a few of them, hopefully you got them. So the angle they're looking for, this angle in the middle, uh, let's call it theta, is just equal to 180, or pi, minus uh, pi over 6, minus uh, pi over 4. Let me just check my notes. I think I've, uh, yeah, I have a mistake in my notes. I've, I've used pi over 3 here, so I'm just double checking uh, that that was correct. Yeah, it seems to be. My notes are wrong. We'll do, do the answer out here. So uh, what is this? What are we taking away from, from pi? Let's just find out what pi over 6 plus pi over 4 is. Uh, add them together, find a common uh, factor. I guess multiply this one by 2. 2 pi over 12. Multiply this one by 3. Plus 3 pi over 12 is equal 5. Uh, 5 pi over 12. That's what these two add up. Take it away from pi. Uh, pi minus 5 pi over 12. Uh, multiply this by 12, top and bottom. And we're left with 7 pi over 12. That's in pi. Of course, if you wanted to do that in degrees and then change it, we would have had, uh, let's see, 180 minus 45 minus 30. I, I don't know, can I do that in my head? 75, 180 minus 75 is 105 and change that into radians. Anyway, um, whichever way you did that at the end, hope, I, hopefully that's the right answer. Let me know if I've made a mistake somewhere. Um, correct me if I've made a mistake. Or if you just want a clarification on anything, ask me in the comments below. Thanks for watching, have a great day.